All right, everybody, what's up? It is your boy, BQ. This is the debut episode, the first episode of The Cool Factor, the Cool Factor podcast here at the Impact Lounge, myself and TW. We're going to talk Impact Wrestling. We're going to talk about the weekly episodic show, but we're not going to do a review. We're not going to sit here and match by match, segment by segment, take you through it. We're going to kind of go through what our takeaways are from the show. What's the, the real talking points? What, what do people want to hear? Uh, it's it's what, what you guys want to hear. Like I said, we're not, we're not going to go little by little and all that crap. So hope you guys enjoy this. It is the first episode. We're going to tighten up this format and we're going to do some new different original things, but you know, first episode. So work with us a little bit. Uh, TW is at work today. So, you know, this is a little bit different. I'm working from home. Uh, he's at work. Um, but we're going to, we're going to knock out this, uh, episode for you guys. So anything you want to say first, before we just kind of like dive into this, we're not going to waste a lot of time. We're going to get into the meat potatoes of this. No, nah, man, let's, let's get into it. I mean, you know, this is the cool factor. So, you know, I want to see, you know, what was cool, what wasn't cool, what we like, what we didn't like, you know, we want to, we want to be the posts of the impact wrestling fan. Hell you yeah. This I mean? is not your mama's basement. Uh, this yeah. is the, uh, the cool factor. So yeah. let's get into the big talking point of the show. The, uh, the big news, Eric Young wins the world title. So TW, I didn't see this coming. I'm sure you didn't see this coming. And uh, I had been saying before I, you know, kind of get your thoughts on this. I've been saying, you know, the open challenge was in my opinion, kind of poorly done. I thought it was, I thought it was just weak. I really, really did. And I said, well, clearly nobody's going to beat him because he's obviously got a program with Eric Young coming. Now, right. part of me was correct, but part of me was wrong also because he ended up he did end up losing the title in the Open Challenge. I just didn't expect Eric Young to be one of the competitors. Ooh. You know, we expected Eric Young versus Eddie at Bound for Glory. Mm-hmm. So now we don't really know exactly what's going on with that. There was a rumored you know, Eddie versus Ken Shamrock thing. And maybe that's still the match. It's just not the world title match. So <laughs> better not be the world. So, title yeah. match. <laughs> so, uh, you know, definitely give me your thoughts, um, man. Um, Eric young. Is, man, my, my initial takeaway, I, I, I couldn't believe they did the title change. I, I mean, listen, there was no promotion for this, no promotion outside of general, right? Like whatever you see on Twitter, no promotion for this. They didn't build it up like a big match, but that would be consistent with, like you said, how they've treated this open challenge the whole time. They've been putting these world title matches at the beginning of the show, in the middle of the show. And if it ain't on last, it's not the main event, period. And you have not treated this like a main event. And I was, I was a little blown away that they actually did it because, you know, coming out of Slammiversary, having Eddie Edwards as the Impact World Champion seemed like the right way to go. It seemed like they were going to put the Impact Championship on an Impact guy who was going to put some shine on the belt, be a fighting champion, and have a guy that Impact fans could really embrace and get behind and be like, yo, that's our guy. And to have him lose the title on, you know, a regular, regular show, like, I, I, that, was, that was shocking. Now, what I can say to that, I think that's probably just herpy burp, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what I can say to that, is at least the title was going to Eric Young, who's another guy that Impact fans will still look at. If you were listening to the stuff people were saying when the different people were rumored to be coming in at anniversary, EY was one of the people that fans were most excited to be seeing potentially at anniversary. So it's going from one guy who's, a, who's a, a certified Impact guy to another guy who's a certified Impact guy. I don't have any any doubts that either of these guys is going to be here over the course of the next two, three years. Isn't it bananas though, that Eddie wins the title and he doesn't even make it through a set of tapings as the champion. I mean, that is crazy. That, that's crazy. I mean, you know, I feel like stability was the word that we both used when talking about why Eddie was a good choice, stability. And I, this, this isn't necessarily instability, right? But it's a shakeup, and we just didn't see coming. But here's the good side. Here's the, here's the good thing about this. The good thing is that this lends to the thing you want the most about your show, which is that you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. Anything can happen, and that's why you need to watch. And so, you know, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it's a good thing. I'm going to lean on the side that, you know, even though it was shocking and I didn't see it coming and they didn't promote it, <laughs> that, <laughs> that there's a positive to be taken from here. Yeah, you know, we, this, the cool thing about everything going on right now is that we're getting spoiler-free shows. What sucks for me is I didn't watch it as it aired because I was watching the Nuggets and the Jazz play last night. Yeah. Um, so I didn't watch it because uh, the winner's playing the Clippers, so I had to watch it. Um, and I didn't watch it live. And then I saw on Facebook at, that EY won. I'm like, holy crap. So I, I was like, damn, you know, uh, I can't remember the last – I do remember the last time on a, a title change happened on Impact that I didn't know was coming. And it's actually mm. when Jade won the Knockouts Championship. That's how long ago wow. it was. Like, wow. usually you always, I always know – one way or another that the right. title change is coming. So that's the first time I had been like shocked in a while. Um, yeah. But he- here's the question though. The cool thing is that we're getting spoiler free shows, but mm. are they, does it feel like they're hot shotting, you know, hot shotting the titles for like they're taking <sighs> advantage of that opportunity. And then we're just getting these title changes all over the place. Okay. So, numerous title changes kind of lends to a little bit of another topic that I was thinking about, which I won't dive into here too much. I, so we could say it's hot shotting. I don't know how much more build this needed. This could have had more build, could have been promoted better, could have made it feel like more of a big fight. They definitely could have done more. That said, EY is certified, established impact guy. He's somebody who fans were excited to see returning to impact. So I don't know that this necessarily need, you know what I mean? Like this wasn't cold. This wasn't like, you know, if they put the title on Heath, right. Or like <laughs> Brian Myers or something like that. Right. Um, so, so th- this wasn't that cold, but it could have been built better. And do I think this is a, the, uh, a pattern of hot shotting titles? I mean, listen, you can make the argument when you look at how they, how they, how he got the title. Um, even though, there was a slow story that was more of a surprise, I would say, than a hot shot. Um, you could argue Deanna Perrazzo was a hot shot. Uh, you could definitely argue the Motor City Machine Guns was a hot shot. So, listen, there's an argument to be made. Now, I think the argument you have to counter with is, are they better off with the current title holders? Okay. So, since we're talking about the world title... EY is a guy right now. Are they better off with him as the champion, as a heel champion, or Eddie, who we've said, oh man, he's he's a company guy, great guy, not the world's mm. best promo, but right. you know. So yes, the answer is yes. Yes, they're better off with EY as the champion. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna bring that that edge, that element. He already was mouthing off about what it was like to work at WWE and people are going to follow up to congratulate him on his interview, uh, excuse me, on his title win. And he's going to go back and probably talk more trash about WWE and say, see, you could have used me on your show. And now look at me, I'm the world champ. So, so yes, EY is, he's, he's plus, by the way, let's not forget Rich Swan is coming back at some point and they actually are doing a good job building this. They're taking their yeah. time, letting the Rich Swan thing bubble. They didn't come right back the following week and have him come back like, ha I'm all good. And so <laughs> there is, there is, I would say, there's benefit to, to EY being the champion right now as opposed to Eddie. And listen, I love Eddie for all the reasons that I mentioned before, but let's be honest, it got old quick. It got old really quick. And so, like, the, you know, the, the shine was off of it. It was like... <laughs> Eddie Edwards was like settling in a marriage. <laughs> it was right, like, right. She's not great looking, but she'll be loyal. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, like, yeah. That was, She's that got was a good personality, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> EY is like, I know she's a stripper, but hear me out. She don't got nowhere else to go. So. <laughs> yeah, but I can change her. I can change her. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's going to be exciting. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> See, now, I, th- I thought Eddie w- – I was really excited when he won. Uh, I was – I talk about this a lot. I was at the first title win in person. Right. Um, I remember I popped out of my seat. I always sit on the – always sat on the non-camera side of the impact zone because I wanted nice. a chair. I don't like standing. Mm. <laughs> right. So I, I would always pop- – I, I popped up. I mean, I think I had kids behind me. I didn't even care. I, I just <laughs> – 
I couldn't, I, I was, I was mind blown. Like I just, yeah. just didn't see that coming. And then I was thinking once he lost that title, I'm like, man, I can't really see a scenario where he ever wins it back mm. uh, because the title reign, again, he was kicking off the show. He was wrestling mm. in the middle of the show, like you said. Mm. Um, and as a matter of fact, I remember talking about this a long time ago in most of his title reigns, he didn't have any clean victories except for Cody. That was the one clean. Mm. The other ones, um, I think. Oh, you're talking about Eddie. I thought you meant. I thought you meant Ey. No, That's no, no. The first time at. Eddie was champion. Okay. Uh, yeah, got yeah, it, yeah. Got it, got it. So he had, he didn't actually have any clean wins. Like he was. Yeah. It wasn't cheating, but it was like uh, Davy Richards had helped him on a couple, or yeah. there was okay. some kind of distraction. You, you know what I mean? He wasn't getting like mm-hmm. these clean huge wins. And I was like, man, yeah. I don't know if he'll ever hold the title again. Hmm. And then when he he under went the character change. I'm like, dude, I can see it under this gimmick. But then he started getting up there with Sammy and then he started like kind of going down again Mm. from a character standpoint because he was, they were building his character and then he kind of went back to the old Eddie. He just looks different. Yeah. A little bit, you know, not totally, but. He was slowly morphing into Tommy Dreamer right in front of our eyes. (laughs) Right. uh, Somebody needs to be Eddie Edwards' friend and uh, slap the donuts out of his hand. I said yeah, it. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, you know, like, I, I agree. I agree. You know, this character it definitely has more substance than, you know, just the I'm the other guy in the wolves, Eddie Edwards. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, like, I, I think this, this is more of a championship type of character. And um, it, it could be more exciting. You know what I mean? It could stand to be more exciting. It is what it is. But Listen, I think he's done a good job and he's still established as, like I said, that certified impact guy who's there when you need him, going to deliver a quality match no matter what that is. You know what I mean? He's got bangers on his list and nobody can take that away from him. And yeah, I mean, like, I will never complain about having Eddie as as a champion or as a main event guy because you know he's going to deliver in that spot. Right. Yeah. So... Th- this kind of goes back to a point, dude. We were talking about this off camera a little bit. Uh, you made a a uh, comment that impact. Why does impact hate impact? Right. Yes. So, <laughs> elaborate so, on that a little for me. Yeah. So, so pretty much, if you look at where impact is post Slammiversary, it is clear that pre Slammiversary, the impact management looked at what they had and said, "This isn't working." We don't, we're not happy with any of these people. We don't think that any of these people are going to draw in more eyeballs. And so we need to basically turn over our whole roster. And they have turned over their whole roster. That is one thing that the Don Callis, Scott Demore era has done better than any, any wrestling company I've ever seen is, is, is turning over the roster in a quality way. They've done that so well. And this is, I think, year three of this regime and they've done a really good job of turning over the roster. I, I can honestly say that uh, multiple times. And so with this latest turning over of the roster, it just becomes clear that they were not, you know, excited about what was on the roster before. The problem is for those of us who've been watching this show every week and, 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 and buying the pay-per-view supporting the brand, like what does that tell us about the people we're trying to support? You know, because, I've been saying, again, like, you know, listen, Kylie Ray's becoming one of my favorite wrestlers to watch. I enjoy watching her so much. Uh, I enjoy following her on Twitter. Like, she is dope in just about every possible way. Yeah. But to get her where she's at, they have basically wiped their ass with Taya Valkyrie. And, like, she's beaten her on TV clean at least three times. And I'm like, yo, she was the longest reigning knockouts champion for, like, a year. Right? And then... And it's, she had that title for a long time. Then Jordan Grace is the person who finally beats her for it. And then they wipe their ass with Jordan Grace with Deanna Perrazzo, who, by the way, is not under contract, right? Not, everybody knows this. <laughs> yeah. She's not under contract. And, I mean, bro, like, it's just, as a fan, how can you have faith that this, that this that they're building towards the future that you can, not even necessarily have faith that they're building towards the future, but – Where's our guys? Where's our guys, right? right like right. the like the AEW fans, like my man Sats that I used to do a podcast with, right? He was with the he was with the New Japan ROH crowd, you know what I mean? So when AEW came about, he was 
filling me in on everybody. You know what I mean? All the all the guys from that. You know what I mean? And they look at all those guys as their guys, right? Like right. the elite, right? The Bucks and and Kenny Omega and 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 Cody. Those are all they consider them to be their guys. Where's our guys? Right? Where's right, our right. guys? Like where's our people that we could be like, yo, I was with this person back when they did X Y Z. I saw all of their great matches, and now they are at the top of the card as. Um, you know, a pillar of this company like they should be. And who is it that you can say that about? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you know, like I said, you know, Ty did great. She carried the title for all that time. What have they done with her since, since the new people came in? Um, she dropped the title of Jordan Grace. What have they done with her since, you know, the new people came in? And don't get me wrong, those matches between Jordan Grace and Yana Perrazzo have been awesome. Bangers, certified, no question. But what does it say? about the people who were already here, that, the, that all the new people were coming in and just, you know, beating you nonstop. <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, the, the North, another one, right? The North, yeah, right. They, they, they come back and, you know, they, they've lost twice to the Motor City Machine Guns, who I love, by the way. I love the Motor City Machine Guns. Um, but again, it's just what you're, the message that you're sending us is the people who were here were no good compared to the people we brought in. Yeah, exactly. Now, it, this brings up a point. You said this, I think, offline. I don't think we started the podcast yet, but at least EY and the Motor City Machine Guns, at least they were TNA guys. But I totally get what you're saying, you know, and I'm kind of going back to the Eddie title reign. I, I When I was doing my old King of the Mountain podcast, and I was, I remember getting really upset at people because going back to him taking on Cody, the crowd was cheering for Cody. Mm. Uh, people were actually turning on Eddie because they were like, I can't believe he's a champion. I can't believe they had him wow. beat Lashley. And I'm like – I got on the podcast very passionate at the end. I was like, Eddie is our guy. What the right. hell are you cheering against him for, mm. for someone who's just here for a second? Mm. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, like, right, right, right. Exactly. And so that's the thing that I just, I have to wonder is, you know, who does, who does, who does Callis and Demore see as their guys? Who do they see as impact guys? You know what I mean? Like the, the one shining example I could look to would probably be Moose, but he's in another feud that I'll talk about later. So <laughs> just, I think oh. they, I think they really hitched the wagon on Brian Cage and Tessa Blanchard for a long time. And were like, these, these are just going to be our guys. This is going to be our face of the company and phew, they're right. gone. Right. Like, look where know. they are. Right. I, mean, I, I as a matter of fact, it's funny that you say that because I think around the time of Slammiversary, uh, Cage posted or quote tweeted a picture from uh, Bound for Glory 2018 with all the champions sitting there. And he really didn't say anything. He kind of just like left it out there to the open. It was like him and like LAX and like Tessa. And the implication being, you know, all of these title holders are no longer with the company. And I saw that and that made me hot because I was like, yo, who were you guys before Impact put you on? Like, you, you came to Impact and got hot and went and got paid from AEW. You came to Impact and got hot and went and got paid by NXT, WB, whatever, whatever. So I'm like, yo, show some respect to, again, not just the company that was paying you, but the fans that were supporting you. Because when you shit on the place that you were working, you're also shitting on the people who were watching and supporting you. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agreed. Um, Let's transition and transition to something else here. We've we've already brought up Diana Perazzo and knockouts a couple times. So the black tie affair. Uh, this was one of my favorite parts of the show because you know I laughed at everyone how they were dressed around the ring. Like it was it, there was heels yeah. and faces. It was like they kind of <laughs> took it seriously. Even Willie Mack was like kind of dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> so I really liked. Uh, so first of all, I like this pairing of Kimberly and her because they're. Mm. It, it seems like they're getting away from this. They were teasing the knockouts tag team division and now all of a sudden right. it's gone. Yep. You know what I mean? But the, but the, they're still loosely have women paired up. So now they, they got these two together. I like that pairing a lot like that. That freaking works. They're, they're great together. But even Deanna on the mic. I mean, I remember once upon a time her wrestling in the knockouts knockdown and thinking to myself, man, I would love to see her in the division, but she has no uh -huh. character at all. <laughs> just, you know, um, and look at her now, like, wow, like she just knock it, knocks it out of the park. So I liked everything about the way it started. And then Jordan Grace came out. And for me, <laughs> even though she was kind of like, I'm sorry, I'm underdressed. Like I like, I liked the dry humor with that. 
but she's already lost twice to her. And right. one was in an Iron Man match. So at that point, next in line, you know, you know what I mean? Mm, mm, so mm. her coming out and kind of like, dude, what, what do you want? Um, and then I talk about being next in line. And then here comes to Neil Dashwood of all people. <laughs> and, and dude, and this goes back to your point. Like what about our people? You know what I mean? Like the ones, the ties, right. the Rosemary's, uh, Alicia has been around forever. Granted, she doesn't win any matches, but she's been around right. a long time. There's these other knockouts, Jessica Havoc, who's, who's been like real loyal. And it's, it's, I've kind of brought it up in the past, almost like a flavor of the month type of thing. Like you bring Tennille into the title picture right. again. Like when she went into the title picture for Bound for Glory, people are like, oh God. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, <sighs> and then she did nothing for months. She popped up every once in a while. Could, could it feel any less important? Right. And then all of a sudden here she is again, her promo at first, I was like, oh, my God, this is so bad. And then at the end, I was like, actually, I think this is actually okay. Like, mm. you got to understand, sometimes there's no crowd. So it can be a little awkward to listen to some of these promos. But I, 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 at least they went off with Kylie Ray kind of standing tall. But now, now the knockouts picture is getting really muddied with, like, mm. four different people for the title – I just like when you just focus on that one person and then when they lose, you move on to the next and now you're, you're muddying it up. But uh, I don't know what it would you kind of think about the Deanna thing to Neil all that. So this is where I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit different from you. I like having multiple options, multiple contenders because that way when one match is over, at least you have an idea of what could possibly be coming next. Right. Like when I'm reading uh, a, an article or a book sometimes it is so hard for me not to look down to the next paragraph to see what's coming next. You know what I mean? Because okay. sometimes you just want to look and see what's coming next. So I like the idea of kind of knowing, okay, is, as much as I hate it, how they've been doing Taya recently, I knew that they were going to do Kylie and Taya and uh, Deanna and Jordan to get to Kylie and Deanna, right? Like I, I knew that I knew that's where this was going. And now, now that you're coming to, I guess, what's, you, you know, um, Deanna and, and, and Kylie, right? So you got to kind of project a little bit as to what's next. But like you said, when Tennille Dashwood walked out on that stage, my first honest to God thought was, who could possibly give a damn? She walked out there. I mean, listen, this, this is not... You know, the first time, second time, third time, fourth time she's appeared on Impact Television. Not only that, go check Tanil Dashwood's social media right now and tell me when's the last time she promoted anything that had to do with Impact Wrestling. Anything. When's the last time she said, I'm going to be on Impact tonight? When's the last time she tried to keep a little tweet fight going with, um, you know, a little kayfabe tweet fight going with whoever she's working with on Impact? If you find it, let me know because I haven't seen it. Okay, like she's not doing much to endear herself to us, the Impact fan. So again, why the hell would we care, right? Like, why would we possibly care about her, period, period? Other than the fact she was in NXT a bunch of years ago, right? Like, other than that, why would we care? Um, you know, Jordan Grace and Deanna Perrazzo have had bangers, and I would be open to seeing even more. So like... Deanna Perrazzo has gone up two to nothing on her. I would not be opposed to letting Jordan get two more on her. Maybe you come back and you have something where Jordan, where Jordan says, give me one more match. And Deanna gives her the match. And it's like, hey, if you don't win, this is not going to be for the title. But if you win, you'll get another title shot. And if you lose, then I'll never defend against you again or something like that. And then you let Jordan win. And then maybe let Jordan beat her again. And then maybe you come back for like the, the final rubber match best of five series, something like that. I would be down to watch it because nothing I've seen between them two has been bad. They've been right. nothing but phenomenal. Um, I've hated seeing Jordan Grace tap out again after Jordan Grace chased Taya for a year for that title. Had that <laughs> phenomenal match that I loved so much at the Bash at the Brewery. Um, and that was the match, honestly, that put me on to Jordan Grace, like really turned me on like, yo, no, she's, she's for real. But she, right, she took on Taya? Yeah. Um, I remember I, Taya being in a chair at one point in that match. Yeah, and they were, like, sitting down drinking beers and bashing each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, yeah. 
I loved that match. That match was so. It was just. It was. That was a great box. show. It was actually, it was really good, except for Rich Swan breaking his back and leg. That was, oh, eh, you know, yeah. bad idea. But other than that, it was a really good show. But um, but yes. So, I think they have a lot of really good wrestlers right now. You know what I mean? Like, and again. You know, they're doing the, the – what are they doing with Taya? She's – they've built up so much equity. I don't know if she's coming to the end of her contract and they're trying to face her out. I don't know what it is, but why – she's so good and she's so bad. And yeah. she's everything. You know what I mean? Like, as a wrestling performer, Taya is as good as it gets. You know what I mean? Like, she may not have that WWE model look, you know what I mean, that they want from all, all the all the women. But I think Ty is a good looking She looks woman, great. You know I mean? She's in yeah. phenomenal shape. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's in yeah. great shape. You know what I mean? Like she's so, you know, it is what it is. But I just I don't understand why you would ever push her to the side. I understand you gotta give more people a shot, right? But there's a way to do it without minimizing who's already here. Yeah, you so, could give her something important to do still. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm very interested to see what comes next from the knockouts because like I said, you know seeing Jordan and Deanna together has been so good. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be down to see more of that. And um, I don't care about Tennille Dashwood. You know what I mean? But Kylie Ray is dope. She's dope, dope. And I so, was, yeah. I was super si excited when they signed Tennille and it, it, it rubbed off real quick. Um, just because she was really wasn't putting on good matches. She didn't feel like her heart was really yeah. into it. And right. it, it was one of those signings where Impact's like, this is a big signing. And it was. Like, it, it was a buzz generator when it happened. But as you said, you know, Josh has even said on social media, with their 1.1 million followers, like, right. who right. cares, though? Yeah. Because they don't, right. they don't know anything. And, I, and something I've said many times is that she had to be turned heel. I don't mm – -hmm. okay, before I continue, mm -hmm. based off this promo, was she a heel or a baby face to you? Heel. Definitely heel a little bit. Heel. That was a heel promo. That was okay. a promo for sure. I've been saying for a while, you got to turn her here. You got to turn her heel abort mission, you know? Yeah. Um, I would, I would build her character around. Do you follow like her Instagram and all that? I follow her on Instagram, but I don't necessarily go out of my way to check. You know, so if you look at her pictures, posts. I mean, they're, I mean, she's, she's a model basically. She's right, traveling right, right. around the world. Mm -hmm. She's doing all this like, I would incorporate that social media character that has the one point, right. you know, into her wrestling persona instead of like, she's two different people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that's something I would just. Yeah, no, I listen, I, I think, I think her, her, her character is, is built in right there. Right. She's like, I'm a model. I'm better than everybody. Yada, yada, yada. Y'all are on my level. And she's a good wrestler. She's a really good wrestler, but it's just like, this is one of those things where, especially now that there's no fans at all, you really have to sell it. You got to, there's an art to it. You know what I mean? There's an art yeah. to performing it in front of fans and there's an art to performing directly for the fans at home and you got to master it. You know what I mean? Like I think the art, the true art is really, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a wrestler. I'm not trying to tell wrestlers how to wrestle, but as somebody watching at home, you can't be saying things waiting for a pop, right? You got to be, just delivering just like a like a dialogue in a TV show, right? And like, yeah. that's what wasn't really coming off like in her promo. She was like dropping yeah. little things and she like waiting for a yeah. reaction. It's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, anything? Excuse me. Yeah. Hello, is this, <laughs> yeah. is this thing on? <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. So I think, I think there can be something with her there. I'm just not excited about her right now. I don't have any reason to be. And I hope they, I hope they can do something with her so that we do get excited. I really, I want to get excited about her. I do. I was super jazzed when they signed her, and then that just fizzled out real quick, like I said. Let's transition a little bit. Uh, but I do want to say I'm, I'm ready for Kylie versus Deanna because that yes. is going to be mind-blowing, uh, how good that's going to be. Let's talk Wrestle House real quick. Give me yeah. – I've talked about it on my channel in the, already, so what are your thoughts on Wrestle House? Wrestle because House is I, excellent. I think it some people so take it too seriously. Oh, you know what I mean? Bad comedy that's supposed to be bad is is funny. Right. It's Josh Matthews trying to be funny and he's not funny. That's different. Yes, but you, you know what I mean. So yeah, continue. So so I I look at Wrestle House and I'm like, yo, this is the type of content that we praise NWA for. Yeah, this type of content that if it was WWE, this would be a a, a 17, 20 or 24 minute show that appeared on the network every week. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's and, and and I was like, 
on one hand, I was like, why is the impact using this to push people to their to their network or whatever? But then I'm like, eh, they can use the content for this show, so that's fine. But it was excellent. It was so good. Like it, it combined the it, it combined, you know, like you said, the elements of like bad comedy, and then it had wrestling in there. You know what I mean? You didn't miss the wrestling. Yeah. Um, it was, you know. Uh, cheeky storylines and, and all of that stuff. You had the swing man, daddy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, was, it was fun. And another thing that I think it accomplished is getting over, I hate using like wrestling insider terminology, yeah. but it allowed us to get more <laughs> used to some of the characters that we really haven't had a chance to develop yet. Like, uh, like the Deaners uh, and like Triple XL. Triple XL yeah. um, and 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 giving us more of the Susie uh, the Susie thing that's, yeah. that's going on. I think this was a really good vehicle for that um, because, as you can see, they are trying to focus more on you know the 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 guys who are already established more. So this is allowing the fans to you know get more endeared to some of these guys who they haven't built up as characters yet. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it actually really did accomplish something really good. And, you know, ultimately, like, I'm happy with it. I love the way it ended. Um, you know, it ended with them coming back. And when they did that, I was like, yo, bravo. I was yes. like, bravo. That was just a, a, a great way to wrap up that because that made it not feel like, oh, this is something you guys went and did to go, you know, fill some time and kill some time. Right. It made it feel like the whole thing was like Continuity. it was all in the same universe right like it was, yes. it was it was all going together and they had the cons they had two consistent threads throughout the throughout well, they had a few right but like one was kylie wants to get back because she just became number one contender right, right. and then there was the 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 bravo rosemary tia story um the thing with the deaners and the beer you know what i mean gotten to see got to see crazy steve working a little more and listen all this stuff was really good because this is all quality character development that we'll, that we'll be able to use later on to care more about these characters. Yeah, exactly. Um, does it worry you, that, not worry you, are you concerned that some of these characters, though, I, everything you're saying is, is correct, and, and it was important that they kept Kylie Ray with that storyline going, I'm the number one contender. Otherwise, we would be talking about, well, wh why do we even care? She's the number one contender. She's in right. WrestleHouse. Not, you know what I mean? So, awesome job with that. Does it concern you that some of these characters now, though, like Triple XL? I, I always like the presentation of Triple XL. They came. They never. Tr they weren't trying to be funny on screen. They mm -hmm. came down with this like mean demeanor. They got great music. The camera's shaking. And then you get this right. where the, there's the comedy. Like you can, the Deaner, it works for the Deaners, but you're taking a non-comedy team, making them comedy. Do you, do you, can, does it concern you that maybe they're, they're not going to be able to bring them back to? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Because if you look at how Triple XL was positioned in Wrestle House, they were, they were serious, but there was also like, you know, the freaky element of, you know, Rosemary putting people under spells and stuff like that. So when Larry yeah. D became, what was he like, Lawrence the Love Machine or whatever <laughs> he was, like, you know what I mean? It was, I thought it was just, it was just a cool way to see just another, you know, different little entertaining side of, 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 of Larry D. Um, and of, really of, of AC and, and of all the guys, you know what I mean? Just getting a chance. It's all about getting me more familiar with the characters so the next time they get in the ring, I care more. I'm not like, who are these guys? Why do I care? Those guys are really fat. Why should I care? You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. those guys look like hillbillies. Why should I care? Like, no, you just, all you did was just make me, the me, the audience, more familiar with these guys. This is what uh, being the elite has done. That's yeah. why people care about, you know, uh, all of these guys, you know, from, for me, I was just like, these are indie guys I've never heard of before, but all of these fans watch being the elite each and every week. They never miss an episode and right. it just creates the running thread. I told my buddy Satch years ago that the reason that they were doing those shows was so that they didn't have to do so much indie style wrestling. And what I meant by that was the indie style, as I saw it was the basic idea of if I go to an indie show, right? Uh, if you're a performer, you may, I as, as, a, as an audience member may never see you again. So you have to pop me right there. You, yeah. have to, uh, you have to endear yourself to me right there. Hopefully I'll go buy something from you. Hopefully I'll, you know, 
go get some of your merch or, 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 or follow you on Twitter, whatever, right? But you have, you have just those moments you're in front of me to become, uh, to make me a fan, right? That's, yeah. and, that, and to me, that's the, the, the methodology behind, methodology behind <laughs> that indie style, right? And, and, and so, that, so they created being the elite so that they can have some actual storylines. So when they get in the ring, they can do more, more, you know, more posture. And again, I don't want to pretend to be, um, you know, like, 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 I'm not a wrestler, right? So I can't tell you wrestling psychology, but I do know right. television, right? And so I, so, but the, so, so if you have, if you're more invested in a story, right, then you care more about what's happening, right? Everything matters more. Every punch, every kick matters more when you care about the story that's happening, right? And so. Wrestle House serve that purpose, right? Like you get, even though they're not going to come back to the impact zone and start fighting over who stole the beers at Wrestle House. I don't think anyway, they yeah, might, yeah. but, but still though, there's some establishment there. We've gotten some familiarity with all of these characters. Um, you know, I look at this guy, Jake from the Deaners and I'm like, yo, are they wasting this guy? Like, I yeah. feel like this guy could be doing more. He wrestles and, and, out here uh, on the ind independent scene. Totally different. Is he a big deal? Is yeah. He a big deal out there? Yeah, yeah, dude. He's always, you know, uh, so he wrestles sometimes in Chicago, AEW, and then locally here at Glory Pro. And he's, you know, always in a main event. He's, his name's Jake something. He's just a big, you know, beefy and, 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 and dude. And I, yeah. see, I see his tweets, like, he's clever, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I, so I'm like, and so it makes me wonder, like, are they wasting this guy? You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is, right? When you're on a TV show, you get a role to play. You got to play that role, play it to the best you can. But yeah. that's what that's the biggest purpose that Wrestle House served is it gave us some reason to get familiar with all of these characters. Hell yeah. Um, and the bringing bringing the elites a, just a really great example. And uh, what NWA does, you know, what I mean, so this was a this was something so different for impact. I hope that with their YouTube channel, they can put up full episodes, kind of like we got with the uh, final deletion, you know what I mean? Like there was yeah. a, a, a director's cut or whatever yeah, it was just right. the whole thing. So I hope they can do that with Wrestle House. And uh, man, I think that would be a great YouTube series. I, I'm not going to sit here and, and beat it to death, but I've hated their YouTube channel for years now. Right. Um, I, would, I would love to see something like that on there, but there's also that connotation of when you move something to YouTube that it doesn't matter anymore. And NXT mm. is the greatest example of that. Mm. You see something on your screen and then it moves to YouTube and it doesn't matter anymore. So I don't so want like, that, that to YouTube happen. YouTube is like the throwaway place. Yeah, that's, I think, uh, that's interesting. And, yeah, so and, that's but, so it's all about like it's all about what you put there, right? So like we we gave the example of like being elite, or even if you look at a lot of stuff NWA did, but this is like first run stuff, right? And then and then the example that you just did is like you put it on TV and then it goes to YouTube, which gives the impression that it doesn't matter anymore. But yeah. I think if you if you package you know again like the individual episodes of Wrestle House and just like you know, put them out, like, just, you know, individual, like, Wrestle House Episode 1, Episode 2, Episode 3. Like, I, I think this is great content that can live. Yeah. I would put it on put it on YouTube, put it on, you know, Impact Plus, and use that, like, you know what I mean? Put, use that to draw more people to those those different platforms. Yeah, and and maybe it is on Impact Plus, and I, I haven't seen it, personally. Maybe yeah. someone's going to be like, oh, in the comments, oh, no, it, it is on there in a full episode. I, I haven't seen it, so. <laughs> Please tell us. Yeah, yeah. Tell us, internet, if we're wrong, tell us. <laughs> Let us know, because I, I wouldn't mind re-watching them, you know, in a full, yeah. you know, the, the whole thing. So, um, but yeah, I really hope we can see just more creativity like that. Um, and just one thing about our podcast, folks, is that TW just mentioned he knows television. I always tell you, I know marketing. So yeah, we're not these wrestling experts. We're not wrestlers, but we do know certain aspects of, of uh, presentation and what, pe what makes people respond and react and feel something like we get it from a different standpoint. So hope, you know, when you guys listen to our opinion, you can be like, okay, well, these guys know what they're talking about. They're coming from, from somewhere different, but you know, um, no, we're not in the industry, but there's things that we passionate and confident that we know, you know, and um, hopefully that sets us apart a little bit. Uh, I guess the last thing I kind of want to get into here, I, I have no idea what you're going to say, but you, you wanted to talk about EC3 and uh, everything going on there. You know, Moose is my, right now he's my favorite so, guy and, and okay. he's my favorite part of the show. Um, so, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. 
All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. All right. So look, my thing is, I don't know why we're supposed to like EC3. Okay, like I, I people like him. People are excited about him. And let me just say, having him close, having his logo popping up, and then him for two seconds appearing at the end of Slam Anniversary, a hundred percent the right move. Yeah. That was very buzzworthy. People were excited about it, but that was the last time I was excited about seeing EC3 on Impact Television. Since I since I saw him, you know, he's been doing this whole control your narrative thing. And listen. If that speaks to you, that's fine. It just, to me, you're speaking to someone who's not me because I don't know, like this whole, the whole world is lied to you. Everything you thought was great was wrong and you need to change. And I, I'm like, yo, know, I'm like, I don't know who you're talking to because nobody ever told me the world was going to be perfect. So I don't know like exactly who are these, you know, mobs of angry people that are following you around in black hoodies. But I'm not, I'm clearly not one of them, right? So there's that. And then the other thing is Moose, right? There has been so much time built up in Moose, right? For mm -hmm. years, whenever they brought in like a legend, to be honest, people they didn't have anything to do with. They brought it, they gave them to Moose, and Moose was working something with them. And yeah. Throughout the course of, I'll probably say the last year, maybe even two years, I think Moose is like undefeated at pay-per-views over the course of the last maybe year or two. He's been, he's, been, he's been taking every little handoff program that you've been having. He should be at the top of the show, but he's not. You always stick him right there in the middle, and he knocks it out of the park each and every time. He lost he to keeps... Eddie Edwards at homecoming. That was his last loss, Oh, did he? Okay. Uh, and when was that? Oh, homecoming. That was like two years ago. Yeah. At least a year ago. That was January of last year. Yeah, right? so a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. So that's what I'm saying. So you have a lot of equity that's been built up in Moose. And to me, I totally understand. I get this concept of like the transfer of, of power, of equity, right? It's like you build up all this kinetic energy and then you send it somewhere else. I don't think EC3 is the place to send that energy. I think the place to send that energy is the Impact World Championship. You're doing all this with Moose just to get EC3 back over again. EC3, who, by the way, just debuted at the last Ring of Honor tapings, that EC3. So I, I'm like, listen, I, t why? Why? And then on this week's episode of Impact, EC3 is talking about how he's going to destroy the TNA title belt that you all love so much. I didn't get that. You I didn't understand all that. This, all this TNA nostalgia, you want it. And EC3 is starting to destroy it and send it back to Moose piece by piece by piece. And we're supposed to cheer for this guy? We're supposed to like this guy? I don't, I don't get it. I mean, if Fitz is gimmick and trying to destroy the past, I mean, if Fitz kind of they, would. They, they have, they've told a good story with the control your narrative thing. I thought they did a really good job with him explaining that. That was the last time I was happy. And since then, I've just been uh, lied to and miserable and everything's just going wrong in my life since the day I won this. And now I must destroy it so I can move forward. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> dude, whatever. That's your thing. Do your thing. But... I don't know why I'm supposed to cheer for this guy. Because we don't want to see it de destroyed. That's not a. No. Yeah, why please don't I do want that. Why do see you do that? Why did you know? Like, why, why don't want to see you? <laughs> Plus, full disclosure, I'm almost always going to root for the black wrestler, okay? In any situation, <laughs> you give me the black wrestler, I'm going to root for the black wrestler. So you have, to, you have to clearly make the black wrestler despicable and unroot forable, or I'm probably going to root for him. So, you know, you really got to make Moose the bad guy to me. You really got to, you know. So I'm an EC3 guy. I'm, I'm, I've always been. So years ago, I talk about this a little bit. I was, um, I was, I was a WWE guy for a really long time. I watched some TNA, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't super in invested. It wasn't my favorite wrestling program. You know, I watched it if it was on. If I didn't watch it that week, wasn't that big of a deal. Right. Uh, EC3 showed up one day, and I'm like this is my favorite wrestler in the world. Like I just like that, just I, I dude, I, there's only three times in, in, in wrestling in my life that I think I've, someone's made a show must watch for me. It was uh, the shield when they were good. I mean, mm. when I mean not good guys, but when they first showed up mm. uh, the, the new day when they were first started being funny and mm. then before they got 
and then <laughs> EC3 in this character. Those are three times as a wrestling fan where I'm like, dude, I cannot miss the show this week because I have okay. to see what this person does. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm just, I've just been an EC3 guy, guy for a long time. But now I see him, again, as one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. But, he, it, you know, you brought up Ring of Honor. It, he just feels like he's just passing through. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like EC3 is on Impact Wrestling. It just feels right. like, the, the, you know, what? as I brought up earlier, Cody, when he worked with Impact for like a few months. You know what I mean? That's what right. it it feels like. So it's it's tough for me to be like, man, do it. These are probably my two favorite wrestlers in the world right now, but I don't – I feel like I have to cheer for Moose and all this because he's going to be around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, mean, right. I, I feel you. And that's a tough spot to put people in. Put people in. But, yeah, listen, you got to root for who you feel, right? That's, that's their job is to sell us. You know, you sell me Rocky, you sell me Apollo, and let me decide who I want to root for, right? And so yeah. – it's okay if you're telling a story that has some layers and some depth and people can pick different characters for different reasons, right? Like everybody's not going to relate to the hero. Some people are more going to feel the heel. You know what I mean? Like that's the, and that's totally okay. Especially again, if it means that you're telling a story that has nuance and layers, then that's awesome. That is a good thing. And yeah, like I said, I, I don't think that what they've been doing with EC3 is bad. As a matter of fact, I think, from a from a storytelling standpoint, it's been good, right? Like, I just don't get behind the narrative, right? Like, I just, I don't the 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 method, you know, that he's here to destroy his past is like, why do I care about that? Why do I want you to 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 uh, vindicate your past so you can go somewhere else, right? <laughs> like, why do I want that? <laughs> okay, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, why yeah. why do I want that? So no. you know, so so to me, as an Impact fan. I can't understand why Impact fans want EC3 to succeed in his mission of destroying TNA. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I, I can't really get that. Okay. I, I, I can feel that. It's hard for me to, to picture what he could do after the same program with Moose, though. Like, it just feels I, – I like the narrative gimmick, but I, I get what you're saying. It doesn't speak to you. There's – I use the rascals as an example. Like they're great in the ring mm. because I've never done drugs in my life. I've never smoked weed yeah. in my life. I started drinking when I was 34 and I'm 40 now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've always been in my right mind. So like, right, 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 right. That right. doesn't speak to me at all. Like yeah, when they're doing right. the, I, I, cause I can't relate, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I get that, that, that happens, but I have a really hard time picturing this EC3 being a mainstay. Like it just seems like he's, mm never he, he he's just in a dark room somewhere and just doing his thing and then the show's happening over here so right. um it feels like he's gonna come out have one match and be out it's what it, what it feels, feels like. like and if yeah and if, if that's the case then moose needs to win right like moose needs to win i don't understand how if you are an impact fan how you are not on the side of moose in this situation EC3 is here to tear this company down, this company that we as fans are trying to build up with our support, right? With our pay-per-view dollars, with our Impact Plus dollars, with our Twitch viewership. We're trying to build, we're trying to build this company up, and he's here to tear it down. How could you be on his side if you're a fan of this company? And isn't it counterintuitive? Because like this is a company who has, who still to this day is like, here's the TNA library. Here's Angle versus AJ. Right. Here's here's right. Samoa Joe. Here's the here's so does TNA. all that go away if if EC3 wins? Yeah, like there's does, a does he burn the, the tape library? Right, <laughs> like they have the impact in sixty that happens after the show. The YouTube is right. almost all old stuff. Um, Instagram. I don't know if the Instagram still has like mo- classic moment of the day or whatever. I, but there's this like. Uh, TNA, we just can't move yeah. on from the past. You know what I mean? So right. it's really just, it's weird because it doesn't, it doesn't match up with the company's vision at all. Yeah. So, and so yeah, EC3 it, should be a heel in that question, sense. Like what exactly is the vision, right? Like we talked about earlier, you know, the, the attitude seems to be out with the old and with the new. And, you know, again, like they've turned over the roster successfully. I am excited about what was coming for Brian Myers. I still don't yeah. think Heath is, anything special uh you know <laughs> he could have been but they chose not the, to 
<laughs> yeah. Right. Looking forward to more of the machine guns. You know what I mean? Like uh, Kylie Ray looking forward to it. Um, Diana Perrazzo is a good heel. I hate her voice. Um, <laughs> I love watching her wrestle. Um, but I like, I want to see her get beat. You know what I mean? Like she's done that excellent job. So she's good. They have turned over the roster a once again successfully and they're still building ace austin you know starting to build madman fulton you know like so they they have they have stuff that i want to see but i think as an impact fan you've been looking for 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 some 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 characters to say that these are our guys our guys you know yeah. again and where's our guys where's our guys where's our girls you know, we we used to have Gail Kim. You know what I mean? She's behind the scenes now. We still we love you, Gail. If you watch this, Gail, how you doing? <laughs> um, so if we, you know, but we, as the Impact fan, who are the people that you could say these are my guys? Yeah, you know something really interesting, man. Uh, Don Callis went on. Uh, everyone knows I don't like Don. I, as a business person, yes, just not as a commentator. <laughs> he went on busted open with yeah. with Bully Ray. This was like maybe two and a half, three years ago. I don't know. Okay. And he was talking about the vision of Impact Wrestling. Uh, mm. This was at the time Sue Young and Brian Cage were pretty fresh signings. Okay. Um, and Bully Ray asked him, if I had to, if you had to sell me on a couple guys right now to, to make me, to, uh, I'm a fan and I, I stopped watching or I, I you know, if you had to sell me on a couple guys, like this is the reason you have to watch mm-hmm. the show. Who are those people? Right. And at first he, he um, tab danced around it, didn't answer it at all. Mm-hmm. And then bully Ray, you know, kind of being the hard ass he is, he brought it. Okay. Hold, hold on. So right. I asked you a question. <laughs> right. Why give me a reason to turn on the show. Right. You know, and he goes, Oh, well um, you know, we got Brian cage and Sue young. Mm-hmm. Didn't really much more than just saying their names didn't really wasn't like, Hey, this is the reason. So then the interview was over and bully Ray reiterated. He was like, I asked him who, who, why should I turn in? Who, who were the guys who should make me not turn in tune in? Who were the guys who should make me tune in? And he couldn't answer it, you know? So listen, that's, and so again, that tells me, it reinforces like what I was saying earlier, which is that they didn't see anything in what they had. And my question is, are you happy now? Right. If you're impact management, are you happy now? Do you have a group now that you feel happy pushing and promoting and saying, this is a a, a group that's going to draw eyeballs to the product. This is a group that's going to draw, you know, people back in once we're able to have people again, you know, like, are you happy with this group now? Or are they reacting to what fans do? Right? Are they looking at the, the, the YouTube engagement numbers, the Twitter engagement numbers, the Instagram engagement numbers, seeing who does you know, good numbers and promoting them more heavily? Um, there's no question that there was a lot of buzz around Deanna Perrazzo from being fresh out of NXT. And they've shot her right to the top, right? So you know, maybe that's what they're going for, which, which on some level you really can't blame. But I think you know, the, the art of television, right, is you can accentuate the positives of the people you have and, you know, de-emphasize uh, their negatives, right? Yeah. So you find a way, right? Like, Mr. Man gets a wrestler that can't talk. What does he do? He gives him a manager to talk for him, right? Like, there's, there's ways to do everything. There's ways to yeah. do everything. So make stars out of the people that the fans can, that the fans are going to be able to, to, to stick with. You know what I mean? Like, if you... Uh, you know, I don't know that there's any more juice you can really squeeze out of, let's say, Eddie Edwards, right? But there's got to be a whole level, a whole nother level to, to Moose, right? If you yeah. put Moose with, with a manager who's a, a slick talking personality, you know what I mean? You go out there, you find somebody like that for Moose, who knows what can become of this guy? So, you know, I, I think, again, is Impact Management happy with what they have now? And, 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 and are they happy enough? to where they can build these people up to where we feel like they're big stars. So I don't know if you were ever familiar with, um, before we wrap this up, I don't know if you're ever familiar with Don Callis kind of put the business model out there a couple mm. of years ago. He did it on Jericho's podcast. And I remember Jericho really questioned it. Like this sounds familiar. So he was, he was said, well, 
you know, the business models they have six, six, seven ma- big names, name stays. And then okay. the, the, the pieces around them would come in and out. Rotate. Okay. Yeah, right. Right, right. And Jericho was kind of like, wait, hold on. So you're, you're only going to have like a handful of people who stay, you know what I mean? Like he was even questioning it. And, uh, so that was the business model that you're going to have the, the, this group of mainstays and then the, the pieces were going to move around them. But the odd thing is here we are, I don't know, two, three years later, it's the other way around. Mm. It's, it's the pieces around the mid card, the lower is, is the same people the, the the main eventers are the one who are just right. Go up one day and then they leave and then someone else comes and then they're gone no one right there's no two-time champions because they're not mm. around long enough to do it right you know what i mean and i think that's where some of the identity is lost again like i would love if jericho would get these guys back on their show or bust it open to somebody and say hey you know let's do like a a, a a state of the union you know three years into it you know what i mean tell us where you are you know with that business model i think that business model actually kind of made sense um if you think about a guy like like cross right they were committed to not paying cross right <laughs> because they had other guys who at the who was off the top of my head were those guys were probably john morrison and um Harry, austin Aries. And, and and brian cage those were probably like the guys who they were like okay these are going to be our mainstay guys and then we're going to circulate other guys around them so that i i can't say that's worked right because the turnover has been just it, it hasn't again leads back to the same thing it leaves us saying where are our guys right like it yeah. needs to be like if if eddie edwards is your guy when you bring in guys eddie edwards needs to be beating these guys until there's somebody who's ready to truly like you know carry the the show and then he dethrones eddie edwards right and it's same thing like i was talking about with ty right like ty carries his title for a year okay cool you put it on jordan grace now like you need to make me feel like jordan grace is a big deal yeah. right like the 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 only thing that's made me feel like jordan grace is a big deal is seeing her have great matches but this is wrestling right like i have to like care about her instagram fire okay like uh, <laughs> if you don't follow jordan grace on instagram follow her um but you know but that's that is that is what we care about her wrestling character you know what i'm saying right like so again like the impact you got to find who are going to be the, the the core pillar stars right and push those people make those people a big deal because how often are you going to be able to you know, have an influx of, of new talent like you did at Slammiversary. Right, right. You got to make us care about who we have. So the last thing I want to talk about real quick, there was a rumored Bound for Glory card. Mm. And, and, and we thought, based off this rumor, that Eddie was going to wrestle Ken Shamrock, and that was the world title main event. And now people are kind of like, well, that's clearly not happening because Eddie's right. not the champion. And the rumor is Eric Young's going to wrestle Rich Swan at the show. I feel like, I, I mean, are you familiar with the rumor? I mean, did you see the card or anything? I did. And there was a lot of scuttlebutt about this, right? Like a lot of people, a lot of people were, were, were talking about it, uh, posting in the Facebook group and, uh, you know, do a little, 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 little podcast about it. And so I, I'm like, that's an interesting bit of content, but who's to say, right? Like who's to say now, as far as what I think about the ideas that were in there, I don't know. The idea of Eddie versus Ken Shamrock, right? Like, I don't have a problem with the match, but there's no way in hell that should be your world title match. But no, no way in hell. hell no. Um, EY versus Rich Swan, to me, every week that Rich Swan is off television is building more and more to this because Rich Swan was so good the last time that we saw him. You know what I mean? He did the, yeah. when I saw the retirement speech, it was just bringing me back to Mark Henry's salmon jacket retirement promo where he t- uh, turns on John Cena and slams him. Oh. And I was like, man, right? See, right? It was, it was so good, <laughs> right? So yeah. good. And, and they captured that. They did it. And again, there's, listen, doing wrestling in front of no fans, that has to be so hard. But the more they do it, like they are mastering it. They're mastering the concept of I'm not working for the crowd pop. I'm more worried about just conveying this emotion of what we're doing. And they nailed it with that. You know what I mean? He did the emotional speech and he, you know, 
with, with the, everybody gave him a round of applause, goes up to the crowd, goes up to the stage, waves by, and Eric Young comes out and, you bastard! Right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, that was so good. And that right there is really all you need to sell your main event. I would, you know, since people love fantasy booking so much, I'd bring back Rich Swan, have him attack Eric Young. Eric Young goes, hey, you, you got to start in the back of the line. And then you have the Rich Swan earn your title tour. You know what I mean? Like how yeah. Rich Swan, you know, keep working his way up till he earns the shot at Bound for Glory. And to me, I think that's your main event, right? Exactly. That, that is clearly your main event. My, my point is, everyone is just like, oh, well, that, that's clearly a fake art. Like, I believe in Fightful Select, personally, Fightful.com. I don't, I've never known that site and um, Ryan, uh, Ross Sapp, what, what, what's his uh, name? Uh, Pro Wrestling Sheet, is that it? No, no, no. Uh, no, it's Fightful, but it's uh, okay. Sean Ross Sapp. Like, I've never, oh, yeah, okay. I've never felt him to be like one of those, hey, I just, I just need clicks mm-hmm. type of dudes. Like, he's usually pretty, right. uh, so I'm, I'm going to go on record and say, I, I still think that's the Bound for Glory card. I just mm. don't think that Eddie versus Shamrock's for the title. I just, I no think way. that's going to be on the card. It, I really right. do. If, if, it, if it's for the title, so maybe if it was leaked, maybe they saw the names and it's just because Eddie was champion and they didn't see any reason to assume he wouldn't be champion, right, right. right? They just assumed that that would be for the title. So there's a chance they could be doing that. I, you know, how are you going to get there? I don't know. Again, I, think, like, I think they're going to completely push Eddie out of the world title picture. And it's going to be this like Ken Shamrock's being inducted to the hall of fame. And he just wants to wrestle the best worker that's in impact wrestling. Whoever's the face of yeah. impact wrestling now type of type of thing. That's probably going to be the exact thing. That's yeah, probably going to be the exact thing. So that's what now I'm like, okay, this is making sense to me. And right. then Eric Young versus Rich Swan, I can see that as being the main event. So if I were a rich swan and I'm not, I would take this time off. Um, well, now I don't think he's really injured, obviously, but, you know, right. kayfabe he is. I would take this time to, like, work on his, uh, his, his physique and everything a little bit. Not to say anything's wrong with how he looks, but yeah, yeah. there's a certain, uh, you know, vision of what someone thinks a – world champion should look like and you know right. what i mean i I, w- yeah. I could just see kind of like when skinny mellow came back from the from the bubble <laughs> like you, you know what i'm right. saying like yeah. or skinny uh nikola Jokic, you know what i mean right these guys came yeah. they're like oh damn these guys mean business you know mm-hmm. i'm just saying what if we hadn't seen swan on tv for a while we just came up and he was just cut up a little bit more and right. just you, you know what i mean skinny, like yeah like he has room to put on weight he definitely right, has right. room to put on weight and I'm not trying to say anything's wrong with the way he looks. I'm I'm just saying like I'm thinking of other sports that I watch. He where doesn't someone... look like a gym rat. He doesn't look like. And listen, right. that's that's my whole thing. I'm not going to go on a tangent here, right? But that's my everybody gets so mad when I'm like, yo, I don't see it when it comes to Adam Cole, right? It's like me too, me too. No, I... it, it's people people like lose their minds. I'm like, yo, he looks like somebody that wouldn't make your high school football team, and right. I'm and. I'm not like questioning his skill as a wrestler, right? But he does not look like somebody that is going to beat people up. I used like, to think period. that when he's in Ring of Honor, because I don't watch NXT, but I watched Ring of Honor at that time. I thought the same exact thing you're saying. Yeah, and so and so so you were talking about Rich Swan and same thing, man. Like, listen, Rich Swan could stand to tighten up. You know what I mean? Now, listen, this is like I'm I'm in no place to to question anybody's <laughs> fitness, but but I'm not on TV wrestling in my tight every week you know what i'm saying yeah that's not my job right that's not my job so listen rich swan as a wrestler he could definitely stand to get his physique up you know what i mean it i think it wouldn't hurt you know what i mean it wouldn't hurt towards like the believability but by the same token rich swan got bangers he's got some bangers i think didn't him and john morrison get a five star from dave Meltzer? i don't know you're talking about the their pay-per-view match when uh yeah that 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 match was so good and got so little fanfare. It was I feel a, like that. Yeah. I, we, somebody's got to look that up. Go ahead, internet. Look that up. Tell us what what your Lord and Savior Dave Meltzer rated that <laughs> Rich Swan versus John Morrison match from one of those pay per views. Because I I heard it was really good. I mean, I know the match was really good, but you know, the guy that you guys listen to who taught you how to watch wrestling, I I heard he liked it too. So I'm just curious as to you know what that was. And again. 
why they didn't promote that more? You know, why don't you promote more the things? These are the things that people like. So if you're getting the, the credit in that way, right, you need to be bragging about that. Yeah. I think a Rich Swan title win would just be, it would be badass. Um, he, he was, he had that momentum going too, and then he got mm. hurt and it sucked. They don't quite have that momentum still because actually when he showed up at Slammiversary, people were pissed mm. because they thought he right. was the, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, this is it? Yeah, this, yeah. Is this your king? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank God Eric Young showed up. But, uh, you know, they were telling a good story with Swan. But, yeah, to say, man, if he just bulked up a little bit or cut up and then, you know, he comes out and he's debuting a new music and he's a little more serious because if he's a wrestling slip – Eric Young at Bound for Glory, he can't come out, and it's his first time in several months on TV. He can't come out dancing, and it's right. the Kofi Kingston thing when we, when he was the champion, right? He was supposed. To, mm. People were like, "Well, can he stop throwing pancakes in the crowd for a mm. second? You know what I mean? So I see so, that with Swan. I don't think he can come out dancing at this point. I think that's a that's a great point, but so similarly to to Kofi, I think there's a, and I, I know you say. You know, the thing that WWE is doing right now, and they're doing it right, they're pushing Big E from the New Day. There's, they've, uh, they really emphasized, they made a point to everybody that he's going to be running as a single now. And since he's, and I said it as soon as, as, soon as they're doing that, I was like, look, I don't want to hear shit about him not doing well as a single, about him not getting over, unless you give him as many chances as you gave Randy Orton. You know what I mean? Like, and so I said all that just to say that, you know, and, and Big E, right? Big E, he's still kind of, when he comes out, he's still doing a little bit like the, you know, the dancing, you know, all of that stuff that's famous for the New Day. Same thing with Kofi Kingston. You know, he was doing a lot of that stuff. And my thing was like, yes, I would like to see him be a little more kind of serious if you're going to be in the world championship picture. But also, I will not blame this on the wrestler. The wrestler does not write their own script. The, the producers, the writers of the show, it is their job to say, this is how we're going to present you. So my thing is, look, if Rich Swan is, you know what I mean, like, you know, dancing, good time guy, I'm okay with that, even as a champion, because when he gets in the ring, it's all business. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't get in the ring and is, like, clowning around. I think as long as you can, you know, give us all, whatever personality and pizzazz you got, give us all of that. But when we get in the ring, it's time to fight. Let's not ever lose sack, lose 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 sight of the fact that we get in the ring. It's time to fight. When you hit that stage, it's time to fight. And so, if you want to dance your way to the ring, that's fine. Dance your way to the ring. But when you get in the ring, action, right? And so, if you can stick with that, then I'm okay. Dance all you want to. That's what makes your character unique. Keep doing it, right? So I don't think you necessarily all have to be one way. Um, I have one thing. Can I detour here? One thing. One thing yeah, that I think yeah. you need to look out for. Okay. This is one, one, one thing, and I don't know if we're going to see coming developments on this, but I wanted to get it off my chest okay. before, before anything happens, anything develops. So, leading up to Slammiversary, the, I, I think you guys all remember there was a promo with um, Ethan Page and his dad where, you know, Ethan Page is back there. He's lifted, and Ethan Page's dad is like, Shamrock, you're about my age. I know you still think you got it, but you don't. Look at my son, yada, 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 yada. And Ethan Page, you know, cuts his promo on Shamrock, and he says... And after this, it's time for the wrestling business to pay up. And when he said that, I was like, because that is the death nail with Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling has shown that if you are not someone who they deem worthy, when you want to get paid, get on out the door. And I really enjoy Ethan Page's work. If you guys have not seen his vlogs, check him out. Ethan Page is dope. And, you know, he's the guy who I think could be one of those impact guys. But now that he's announced that he wants to get paid, I don't see it coming. I don't see it coming. I saw a report that AEW has interest in him. And so he's probably going to go get paid, which I don't blame him, right? I think it's, it's, it's impact's job to pay them, right? You're building these stars. You're giving them a platform to build themselves. Now you should pay them so that people right. come to the shows to see them. Hmm, crazy concept. But – Ethan Page has announced that he wants to get paid. So I was, it was great knowing you, bro. It was great right. knowing you. Um, you know, call Santana and Ortiz, you know, ask him what's the best way to, uh, you know, get in touch with Tony Khan because I did you know, Impact does not have a great history of, of, of paying his talent. So yeah, um, it, it, good luck. 
if I were Impact, I would um, I would pay him, but I would also hire him to run your social media or your run your mm. YouTube channel. Not not create the content, but run the channel. Because if you right. look at his vlog, like he gets it, he understands. Whoever runs the Impact one doesn't understand. Right. They don't get it. Um, as a matter of fact, AEW put up the other day when Cody beat uh, Brody Lee beat Cody. They put must see shocking win, and I felt like that was like a a dig at Impact because <laughs> really? that's the way they they label oh, all their yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's the only video that they have labeled uh, like funny. that. So that's funny. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would uh, so. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. The, the, today, it's not tonight. Uh, so this is the episode one, uh, the cool factor. Hope you guys dig it. As you can see, we had some talking points from the show. And, you know, we, we uh, branched out a little bit, moved on to some other topics. But we just want to keep it free flowing like that and all that. So hope you guys dig it. Uh, we will catch you guys next time. And uh, for now, we are out. Peace. <laughs>